Yeah, you know, true. And when you talk to these rappers, they'll tell you, well, you know, gangster rap ain't really hip hop. I don't hear you saying that. Mm -hmm. I don't hear you making a music company separated out. Mm -mm. You know, there's too much tongue in cheek criticism. Stand up and stand out. It's like the old school rappers, they scared of the young brothers. They scared of them. Mm. Of Feeney Shakur's life in the New York City Black Panther Party. And they're showing you Tupac's life in hip hop. And they're really drawing a parallel to show you how Tupac and his mother's life were almost synonymous. Mm. Even though his medium was hip hop and her medium was community grassroots revolutionary politics, they kind of went through similar paths. And, you know, I'm a fan of Jamie Foxx. He's not the most conscious brother. Obviously, he has an appetite for snow bunnies that I don't support. But by no means, by in no means whatsoever would I wish this on him. Uh, Dr. Umar, I was just playing there, spot by Charlie Mack. You know, they give me have a uh, 50th year anniversary of hip hop. Um, or, did, had you considered yourself a hip hopper? Um, definitely. You know, I grew up in the hip hop era. Right. You know, I'm a hip hop fan. I have my favorite artists. You know, I started with um, Public Enemy. Mm -hmm. you know, from Public Enemy to Naughty by Nature. Naughty by Nature brought me to Tupac. Um, but you know. And I, and I don't object at all to them celebrating 50 years of hip-hop. But I also wish, Bobby David, that after they finish celebrating mm -hmm. 50 years of hip-hop, I would like and I would hope that they would turn around and have a sit-down conference on 50 years of the political impact of hip-hop on black people. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, we have, after the celebration, we got to get down to business. That's right. Because hip-hop has not been all peaches and roses. You know, uh, gangster rap has taken over to the detriment of the minds of our youth and our community. Uh, gangster rap has done very little for the black community at all, other than providing jobs for members of the artist's entourage. There has been no real systemic benefit. I mean, if I'm wrong, can somebody correct me? Has there ever been a rapper in 50 years to build a hospital? Or a group of rappers, have there ever been a rapper or a group of rappers to build an independent school for our children, not no charter school owned by the government? Has there ever been a rapper or a group of rappers to open up a bank for the black community? I do believe Killer Mike is uh, somewhat knocking on that door. Um, you know, has there ever been a rapper or a group of rappers that tried to open up a supermarket to make sure our people are not living in food deserts and accessing quality food? I mean, where is the 50 years of hip hop? political impact conference yeah uh, it's you amazing know, or, or are we or are we going to act like hip-hop has not been a hindrance for the black community mm, are we going to act like hip-hop has not taken its toll on us as a people i mean it's made billionaires out of white men mm -hmm. it's made billionaires out of european jews i mean you only got a few billionaires in hip-hop who you got jay-z um puffy uh, maybe one more. That's it. Three billionaires out of 50 years. The most influential sports form That's in the world right about. now. That's right. I mean, I, it, all I'm going to say is if all they're going to do is celebrate hip-hop, like hip-hop hasn't hurt the black community, then I'm going to say the 50 years of hip-hop celebration has been a detriment. You have to deal with the political consequences. You know, yes, there's some positive in there, but... I don't know. These past 25 years of hip-hop, mm, the past mm, 25, mm, I'm going to mm. say it has been done more harm than good in the past 25 years. It has been very detrimental to our community. It has been very de detrimental. dehumanizing. Very detrimental. The misogyny, the promotion of violence, and it's so hypocritical because most of the rappers who promote this self-destructive lifestyle don't even live in the, in the community anymore. Mm. You don't even have to deal with the consequences of your lyrics. You know, so I'm, I, I mean, I'm, I'm a hip hopper, positive hip hop, you know, but this, and, and, but as far as I'm concerned, it's still positive hip hop holds gangster rap accountable because right mm -hmm. now, gangster rap is, you know, the predominant form of hip hop. Yeah, you know, true, true music. When you talk to these rappers, they'll tell you, well, you know, gangster rap ain't really hip hop. I don't hear you saying that. Mm -hmm. I don't hear you making a music company separated out. Mm -mm. You know, there's too much tongue in cheek criticism. Stand up and stand out. It's like the old school rappers, they scared of the young brothers. They scared of them. Mm. They don't
don't want to check them. They don't want to tell them, hey, brother, this is out of hand. We got to do something about this. And, of course, the white Jewish music companies, they're controlling the whole show, man. It's pathetic. It is. It's, it's their 50th anniversary. <laughs> This was 50th anniversary. This 50 years of I'm making all that money, millions of dollars <laughs> off of self-destructive black music. That's that's that's, that's, that's what it is. You have to be ready for self-destruction. A Jewish celebration <laughs> on 50 years of exploiting hip hop culture, uh, turning it into gangster rap, and making these black folks destroy themselves. 50 years of exploitation. That's all it was. That's oh, all it was. My goodness. And nobody wants to say nothing about it. You know, well, we just said it. <laughs> exactly. So the artists are afraid that the couple dollars they do get, they might lose that. You know, yeah, I think I heard you say that they can't, they can't spend that money on nothing but fun stuff. They can't. That's it. All you can do is buy merchandise. That's it. Merchandise. That's why they got fifty cars, two hundred pairs of sneakers. I mean, how many more jeans you gonna buy? Mm. How many more outfits you gonna buy? How many more mm. Gucci sandals you gonna buy? How many more wigs are you going to buy? Mm. All they can do with their money is buy stuff. Yep, and become billboards for those brands. Build anything. What are you building mm. for your people? Mm. Not a single institution? Mm. Uh, out of 50 man. years. With, with, they, out of 50 years, they ought to have a hip-hop university. After, I mean, Dr. King been gone for 55, so basically the post-Dr. King era has been the era of hip-hop. Wow. It has been the era of hip hop, and what do we got to show for? What does the black community stand? What have we gained as a people from hip hop? That's what I want to know. I need the rappers to answer that. What? How is the black community? Are we better or worse mm -hmm. after fifty years of this? Not the individuals, but the community. Are we better or worse? Exactly. Come on, man. They know it ain't doing nothing for us. Mm -hmm. They know it ain't doing nothing mm -hmm. for us. Nothing but opportunity to make more money. The, 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 you know, the heart and soul, Bobby David, of my message tonight is we are complicit in everything. That's else. right. That's right. There is That's nothing right. that happens to black people that we are not complicit in. Mm -hmm. We're complicit in all of it. Whether we are all complicit, whether it's just a segment of us, you know, like the politicians or the bourgeoisie, but we're all complicit. Wherever there's a problem for black people, there's black people who help make that problem a reality. And, and that's why I look to you as a psychologist. We have to be able to reverse some. I often talk about on the show, we have to unlearn those things that we have been taught and relearn the things that we need to know. But as a psychologist, what, what, how can we reverse this? What can we do? Frederick Douglass said it best. It's better to raise strong children than repair broken men. You're not saving a lot of these people because they don't want to be saved. We have certified ninjas in the black community. Mm -hmm. And you know what I mean by ninjas? Oh, yeah. Certified ninjas. They will blow your head off if you try to stop them from doing what they do. And we have to understand that not everybody can be saved. Not everybody can be reached. We have to find the ones who can be saved and move on. I'm telling you, we got some black people out here. They don't want to hear nothing about no unity, nothing about no organization. I'm selling my weed, and that's that. I'm selling my this, and that's that. I'm doing my robbery, that's that. Don't come to me with none of that black power ish. Do you know what you I, know? I, I, I was just reading today about this uh, female, um, Julia Clarice Brown. Uh, she was a FBI informant and was, it was an informant for Martin Luther King and, and helped to set him up. I'm not proud. Uh, yeah, and she said that she's still proud. She said she's proud because she loves her country, and she'll do it again for her country. And she will do it again for her country. There you're looking at a certified African. A certified African. I was watching the Dear Mama documentary on Hulu about Tupac and Afeni Shakur. I don't know if you had a chance to check no, it out. No, I didn't see that yet. You know, but as a Tupac fan, I've probably seen almost every documentary on Tupac. Mm -hmm. And this is by far the best one I've seen, Baba David, because they're showing you Afeni Shakur's life in the New York City Black Panther Party. And they're showing you Tupac's life in hip hop. And they're really drawing a parallel to show you how Tupac and his mother's life were almost synonymous. Mm -hmm. Even though his medium was hip hop, and her medium was community grassroots revolutionary politics. 
they kind of went through similar paths, even though it was two different time periods, you know, two different modes, two different modalities, two different structures, but they had a lot in common. It was almost like he kind of relived his mother's life through hip hop, through art, what she lived, you know, through the Panther Party. But if you get a chance, go to Hulu and check it out, man. It's worth watching. I'm going to look at it tonight. Yeah, you got to check it out. But in that documentary, uh, they were interviewing one of the Panthers, and he talked about how the FBI co-intel pro, their, their favorite tactic to get at the revolutionary leaders was to send sex partners to them. Wow. Uh, he specifically mentioned that prostitutes, the FBI, would send prostitutes into the Panther and Black Liberation Army offices to become secretaries and girlfriends. Yeah. So through pillow talk, and I'm paraphrasing him, but he did say that's what they used, yeah. prostitutes. And through pillow talk, they would find out what the next moves were, what the Panthers were planning, what the Black Liberation Army was planning. And, uh, yeah, he said prostitutes, and that blew my mind. He said they used prostitutes. They sent the prostitutes, they dressed them up, and sent them in there, and that's who they used partially to undermine us. And even with Athene Shakur, Alex McDaniel, the drug dealer who she befriended, allegedly uh, he was a paid informant who was sent to infiltrate Athene Shakur's life and hook her on dope. Hmm. And that didn't come out to their mama. That actually came out of another documentary called The FBI's War on Tupac Shakur and Black Leadership mm-hmm. that was put out by a Caucasian by the name of John Potash, P-O-T-A-S-H. I once interviewed him when I still had my Dr. Umar radio show uh, many, many years ago. His mm-hmm. documentary is on YouTube. But, you know, the use of sex and relationship and intimacy that was one of the biggest weapons. And Bobby David, that's why I try to be as careful as I can be, brother. I know that's I right. Be, ah, I know that's, that's right. The they sure they probably try to come after you. Yeah, that's the only way they can get me. I'm <laughs> party. I'm old fashioned. I don't have no addictions. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, and that's so how they, they did uh, Mary and Barry that way. Yeah, they set Mary and Barry up with a woman. Uh, one of Huey P. Newton's uh, women. They that, said was oh, man, that hurt me so bad when the, the, the way that Huey turned out and the end of his story. That, that because And he's still a hero, you know, regardless. And you know what? He's still I'm, a I, hero. I, you don't throw out the baby with the mm, bath water. And you know what? I'm you so know. glad I just said that because I was thinking about that today and yesterday about you. I said, you are undeniably one of the most controversial um, pro, 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 pro Pro, 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 prophetic speakers of our time. Nobody can deny that. They may can find some fault here or there because you're a human being, but they can't deny your contribution of uplifting the consciousness of black people. And so I'm saying if they can accept that and accept the fact that you are human, then why can't they accept the fact that sometimes you may stumble? I'm not saying that you do. I'm saying you may stumble. You may say some things that they may not like. But what about all the other good stuff? What about all the other great contributions? They just throw the baby out with the bathwater. Absolutely. And the reason why we do that, the reason why we have to throw out the baby with the bathwater as black people, because number one, we have to satisfy our appetite for self-destruction. That's number one. We have a very voracious appetite for self-destruction. That's number one. Slavery and colonization gave that to us. That's number one. Number two, we need an excuse not to be obedient and accountable to authentic black leadership. Black people do not like answering to black people. Mm. We need excuses not to be obedient and not to be accountable to authentic, non-religious black leadership. Okay? And the third reason we have to do this, uh, Baba David, is because of our religious conditioning. Mm-hmm. All the prophets of the Bible were largely infallible. They had a couple sins here and there, a couple shortcomings here and there, but for the most part, their garments were totally clean. As I said before, we handle our politics through the lens of our religion, mm-hmm. and it doesn't benefit us. Mm -hmm. And since Joshua and David and Moses and Jesus and Abraham and Muhammad and Ezekiel and Obadiah, since all of them were righteous men 24 hours a day, 
seven days a week, in order for black people to follow somebody, you must be perfect. Mm. And there's no such thing as a perfect leader, mm -mm. which means black people will never find anybody they feel uh, is uh, qualified enough to be followed. Wow. The religion sabotages the authentic black leadership that we have. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. Like I say, sometimes you realize it's like they have on blinders and can't see peripherally what's good for them. Uh, have you heard about uh, Jamie Foxx? Did you anything about him? What's I heard him? about Jamie Foxx. Of course, there's a lot of rumors swimming around about what happened to him. Uh, I don't want to name names because, again, it's only allegations. Uh, some people are blaming certain black uh, higher up within the entertainment industry. Uh, somebody said that Jamie Foxx was about to expose somebody and that person had some of him. Uh, I did hear another report that somebody said Jamie Foxx on the set of the most recent movie that he's filming, he asked for extra security. They said he was acting somewhat paranoid and concerned about his whereabouts. Uh, and they said the next thing you know, he's in the hospital. It was almost as if some, he knew somebody was coming for him or looking for him. You know, all we can do is pray for him. But, you know, when you get in that Hollywood, Father Davis, that is a very demonic, you know, industry to be a part of. And, you know, I'm a fan of Jamie Foxx. He's not the most conscious brother. Obviously, he has an appetite for snow bunnies that I don't support. But by no means, by in no means whatsoever would I wish this on him. You know, my hearts and prayers go out to him and his family. Mm -hmm. I hope he comes back. You know, in my humble opinion, I think Jamie Foxx is the most, uh, what did you call it, talented black man in America. Wow. You know, I don't know of another black man who has that. I mean, his brother does. I think he does instruments. He mm -hmm. does comedy. Mm -hmm. You know, he does radio. Acting. Yeah. Acting. He can sing. I didn't even know that his album was a platinum-selling album. He ran a Grammy. I didn't know that. Why did he either? Yeah, he's a platinum-selling artist. I know you're trying to say, but man. Yeah, he sold a million albums. So Jamie Foxx is that dude. You know wow. what I mean? Right up there with Denzel, you know? So for this to happen to him, you know, at such a young age, I mean, he's a young brother. And he's been through a lot, too. A lot of people don't know that Jamie Foxx went through hell, Bobby David. His parents gave him up for adoption when he was a kid. You know, I think he's still trying to reconcile with his biological parents. Like, he really had a hard road, you know, and, and, and for this to happen to him. You know, he has children. He has daughters. You know, I just hope the brother comes out. I, know, too. I think he's a genuinely good guy. Too. You know, very talented brother. And I hope he comes out. But the longer he thinks, I'm getting scared, though, Bobby David. The longer he, you know, to not hear from him directly is bothering me. Yeah, some people try to say he may have been poisoned. And the poison may be getting worse and worse. Build it up. Um, God, I hope he didn't make no deals with the devil, man. Ooh. I hope he didn't make no deal with the devil. You know, I'm just going to ask the most high God not to let him, lie, let you know. They just took Whitney from us. They just yeah. took Mike. They just took Prince. Yeah. You know, they just took Sam Cooke. You know, they just took Mark Big. They just took Malcolm Martin, Mega, Huey, Bobby Hutton, George, and Jonathan, Fred. I mean, they just stole enough of us, man. Yeah, Malcolm X Day coming up uh, pretty soon here in Philadelphia. Malcolm X yeah. Park. May 19th. You know what? May 19th, are they having it on that exact day, Bobby Day? I believe so. I think I saw something that they said May 19th from uh, Gabriel. The fire, if you see a flyer, please send it to me because May 19th is a Friday. Okay, let me see. I, let me see. I'm looking at it right now. And it says May 19th, 23, 2 to 7. Send me that flyer. I'm going to send it to you. Yes, because I will. That will be my last event that I go to okay. before I fly to Johannesburg. Um, I'm, I'm scheduled to be in Johannesburg, South Africa, from the 20th to the 24th, speaking throughout the country there. Wow. And then I have been invited by the Ethiopian government to keynote African Liberation Day in Addis Ababa 